Accidents all over the place. This time on the highway through hell. Oh, it's slippery. An old rival turns up the heat. You're out of bed. They're all chrome and gleam. I'm a work truck. Just hate to see him around here. And takes a job from Jamie. Acquiring's got it. It's money right out of my pocket. Take that, James. <laughs> and the new recruit. If it involves a tow truck, there's nothing that I can't do. Faces a harsh reality. The only people that care about tow truck drivers is tow truck drivers. Wow, 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 wow. In the rugged mountains of the Pacific Northwest, there's a highway like no other. The Coquihalla is an engineering marvel. But when the weather turns bad, Look out! it's like the Bermuda Triangle of truck accidents. Keeping the coke open takes an army. When the highway shuts down, the world shuts down. And a last line of defense. Honored. A heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because here, closure is not an option. This winter storm has turned the Coquihalla Highway into a war zone. She was some slippery this morning, holy. Trucks and cars are spinning out on Snowshed Hill. Accidents all over the place. While the stranded drivers wish they were anywhere but here, there is one man on the mountain who couldn't be happy. When, oh, it's a fan, I start racing in my mind. I got to get there. I got to get there. I got to get there. Adam Gazzola has been patrolling the Coquihalla Highway since he was a teenager, always itching to get that next big job on the hook. I'm always scared somebody else is going to beat me there and scoop me on the job. For Adam, this is more than just a job. Some people smoke dope or drink booze. I just tow. And that's my rush. Last year, Adam was the undisputed king of the hill. His Heavy Rescue 52 made more money than any other truck in Jamie's fleet. Adam is highly competitive. He will push his weight around. You send him out on the job, he's getting the job. But this season, Adam is no longer the only big gun on the mountain. Trouble on the mountain has attracted the attention of the Green Wrecker, run by Al Quiring. Yeah, 10 for I'm still fired up about it, actually. It gets my blood going. I, I don't believe he should be here. This isn't his area. He should stay down in the valley until with the other down there, as far as I'm concerned. But he keeps coming up here because he's got no work. Al lives a 90-minute drive from the Coquihalla Highway. This is not his backyard. Today's the day my toes tingle. Maybe we'll get a five or a six truck jackknife. Al is notorious for his antics. We're bogging down the hill here in a two-laning highway. You know, he's kind of off in his own world. Coquihalla is making him go crazy this year. He's willing to take bigger risks than just about anyone to scoop a job. Me, my big old Vulcan wrecker, my stop on tools. Oh, you been here, what else eh? can a guy want? Just a little snow. But Al is no newcomer to mountain towing. I liken it kind of to the Hatfield McCoys. Um, their family's been in it for, I think, three generations, and ours has been in it for this. We're just coming on to our third generation. We've been competing in the towing industry for that long. And with a family rivalry going on three decades, there's more than enough bad blood to go around. It gets the hair stands up on the back of your neck if Al's getting you on a job. Adam just goes through the roof. He'll be talking about it for three days and phoning me up and Al got us and blah, blah, blah. And so I don't only get scooped by Al, but I also hear it from our own guys. Their way of doing business couldn't be more different. 
Al is a one-man band willing to travel long distances to pick off the best jobs. Jamie has spent millions of dollars to base his yard out of the town of Hope right at the entrance to the cove. You're out of bed! Woohoo! As far as Jamie's crew is concerned, the coke is their turf, and Al is a poacher. He doesn't like the way we do it. I don't like the way he does it. They're all chrome and gleam. I'm a work truck. Their trucks are always shiny. My truck is dirty because I'm working all the time. Al has the mentality that uh, the whole world is his turf. I see there's another wrecker going by right there. And I don't know if he's coming for this one or not, and I don't really care. He's up here on the coke trying to scoop us. So I just hate to see him around here. What would you rather pay for, 10 men or one guy that works like 10 men? <laughs> How about that? Take that, James. <laughs> Al has good reason to be cocky. Jamie's number one truck is down. The new three quarter of a million dollar rotator has been benched by a 50 cent part. That's a PTO gasket that fits on the air, air shifter yeah. for the PTO that engages and disengages the winch mechanism for the truck. When that gasket leaks, the tranny fluid leaks, and leaks out. So the truck had to be shut down here because had you kept going, you would have been buying a new tranny. Jamie may have saved the transmission, but at the height of the season, the rotator is still stuck in the shop. When it's snowing, you have to go out there and catch as much fish as you can. Having any truck down and, and not being available to make whatever scrap of money you can make is tough. Just after lunch, a trucking company calls for help over the radio. Just had a call. He needs to be pulled out because he is stuck. For Al, the chance to pull a fully loaded tanker out of a ditch sounds like a good payday. There's a 35-foot tanker trailer with a load of ethanol in it. He spun out and got himself over on the edge of the road. It's a job that on any other day would go to Jamie Davis. Just like a hunter that gets to the field first, he shoots the buck. Yeah, 10-4, thank y'all. Back at his shop, Jamie is still cooling his heels, waiting on a part. So you just hear that? No. That job up by Apex or whatever? Yeah, what happened? Choiring's got it. Really? Or how do you know that? I have friends in higher places. Two of Al's trucks went town, went through town, heading out when I was coming out here to see you about your... They were heading out? Yep. Two, both of his trucks. Really? Both the place we're going to is right up on the mountain there, if you see the buildings up on the... Uh on that rock face there, right behind the clouds now. For a guy who lives on the edge of Vancouver, the remote call is a long way off his regular trap line. We're in cougar country, not the ones with money. We're talking about the four-legged furry ones. To reach the wreck, Al has to navigate his heavy wrecker up a narrow gravel road. Always drive like nobody is ever going to come and save you, and you'll be OK. Here's our guy right here. When the rig spun out, the driver tried to back down the hill. It was too icy, slid into the ditch. And just couldn't get out there. Tried it a couple times before I get it too far in the ditch. We stopped. The tanker is hauling methanol, an explosive fuel destined for a mine located at the top of the mountain. The truck is now near its tipping point. If it flips over, we'll have a chemical spill, and then and that's not good. Arrow hook on the far side and get it turned. Just leave your brakes on until you turn a bit. If Al isn't careful, the tanker could topple over. Just leave your brakes on. Oh, it's 
flip room. Al gets the tanker out of the ditch, but he decides to stick around. We take off and peel out of here. Chances are in the next corner he's going to have a problem. Al leads the tanker up the icy road. On one side of them, a cliff drops straight down to the valley below. So he's careful to keep his speed to a crawl. They make it through three sharp curves, but just before they round the last bend, the tanker spins out. I think I might be stuck on that last corner. I think we're gonna have to go and uh, pull that bad boy out. The hill is too much for the tanker. The only way to get it up is to tow it. On the Coke, it's a routine job. The road there is wide and a tow up is easy. We'll make some sparks. But out here, in the middle of nowhere, the high mountain switchbacks are a whole other story. It's been a bad day for Jamie Davis. A blown 50 cent gasket ah. has sidelined his three quarter of a million dollar rotator. Now, a big job has been scooped up by his longtime rival, Al Quiring. And I'm the only guy up here, and I got the road open all day long, no problem. But hooking up a loaded methanol tanker on a mountain back road. Here we go, guys. Turns out to be a handful. Let's get this guy to the top of the hill. Let's see if we make it that far. It's a routine job back on the highway, but on a high mountain switchback, it's a big gamble. Recently in Norway, a heavy wrecker tried this move in broad daylight, but the semi being towed caught a wheel and dragged the wrecker over the edge. Incredibly, both drivers survived. There's no point in fooling around. Let's get up there. Now Al has to pull off this same move here in similar terrain and in the pitch black. Think you're done? That's just when things are getting good. Even with the horsepower of both trucks working together and Al's 12-wheel drive, they barely make it 50 yards before they run into trouble. Oh, it's been on a little bit. It's like old man Winter's trying to hang on to that trailer so we can't get towed up the hill. But Al backs off on the power and nurses the two trucks of the slippery road. This is painful. Going up slow. His patience pays off. After 45 minutes, they finally reach the top. The mine gets its delivery, and Jamie's biggest competitor chalks up a win. Nothing wrecked, nothing hurt. More importantly, nothing leaking. Down in the yard, Jamie is impatient for his rotator to get back in the game. And the news of Al's victory last night isn't helping. The competition is on your heels all the time. If you're not being competitive and you're not, you know, moving forward with equipment and guys, you're going to die. 
Lately, more cars have been using the Coquihalla Pass, and that means more small wrecks. To keep up with the new calls, Jamie hired Greenhorn Rob to do the lighter duty toes. The chains are too long. Oh, this isn't good. Should I drag it like that up and then flip it up here? But that hasn't gone so well. No, but I went to pull it out though and it wouldn't come. Get a sledgehammer out of my truck, out of the box. Yeah. And then give it a tap because it's frozen. It's like, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I should just cut my losses. So to fill out his roster, Jamie has hired a more experienced driver, Ken Monkhouse. I've been riding around in tow trucks for 34 years. I have experience in all types of towing. If it involves a tow truck, there's nothing that I can't do. Jamie recruited Ken in Vancouver, where only the strong survive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of city towing. Ken understands competition. He understands who's on his back and who's coming for him, and he's following that game pretty big. Whereabouts on the Coquihalla are you going, my friends are wondering. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, that shark that's going to go out and get that car and bring that business in here. Five fours on location. It's all about competition. It's all about winning. You have to go out there every day and win, 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 no matter what the cost. Keep me going, keep me rocking. I'll work for three days straight if I have to. Jamie has high hopes for his new driver. If only Ken can survive his first season on the coach. Lots of truck drivers flying by at high speed. I'm not going to go back into Vancouver with my tail between my legs and say I couldn't cut it. It's not an option. Higher up on the coke, Adam is on the prowl. After the snow flies, you can't, you can't sit on your ass and expect to make money. You got to be out there. Hustling up work, you gotta be listening to the radio. He's determined not to let Al take another job. Al, we're trying to scoop us. You're just really rubbed it the wrong way. But Al's not on the mountain. He's pulling into Jamie's yard to drop off his new brochure. This is right off. Hey, James. I gotta say, if you need a tow, here's the information. Oh, man, I got brochure. a brochure. Oh, thanks, Al. Well, let's park my truck. You sucked up all the business today. It's like a big vacuum. Get reports back all down the line. Al's already there. Beat me to it. Works harder. We show up at fax machines now. We're modern. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> you, you suck up more work than all eight of my guys put together. Bring her on. This is winter. Yeah. Let's get on with it. This has been going on for generations. It's money right out of my pocket. Come on, get out of town. I got to make some money now. Get, get back to Alder Grove. But while Al is rubbing it in, Adam is still working the coke, and his persistence pays off. At 9.40 p.m., the coke is shut down when three semis tangle up in jackknife. Adam is the first wrecker on the scene. Oh, mess, eh, Terry? Both southbound lanes are completely blocked. The truck for that trailer is actually spun around, still hooked to it. Yeah. Here, it's on the other way. It's on the other way. I'll have to swing it right around over to here, regardless. Highway authorities ask Adam to drag the wrecks to the side to get one lane open right away. So as soon as we got single lane traffic, we'll, we'll shut her down and get the traffic out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This highway's guy is pretty antsy to getting her going, so. Yeah. Because the rotator is still down, Adam had to call Hugo in one of the smaller trucks to help. So I'm just going to tear this thing around and uh, get it off to the side. But the highway rep doesn't think that's enough firepower, so he calls up the competition. It seems Al Quiring is here. Al Quiring. With Heavy Rescue's best truck down, Adam is working shorthanded on the coke. Seems Al Quiring is here. And the highway rep has called Adam's nemesis, Al Quiring, hoping to speed things up. The idea is to get this red truck out of the way. Jamie's going to tow it down that way, out of the way. The next truck, Al Quiring should get it. We'll tow that away, and then we got single lane traffic. 
The last guy Adam wants on this job is Al. I just don't want him to get the job. That's my job. I just have a competitive nature, and I want to be the one doing it all. That's my mandate, is to get the road open. It's always the way. And if it upsets some people, it's too bad. I need just to pull up out of the way there, Hugo. OK. Adam and his crew race to clear the mess before Quiring's Green Wrecker arrives. Hey, Hugo, can you grab the front of that truck and spin it around now? Just spin it right around. Should be able to. OK. OK. Don't worry about your boom. Just keep winching. We're just going to get it off the road for now. We're just going to swing it around, and we'll get old Bruce in here. He'll hook it right up off of the up to the exit. But 30 minutes later, the competition rolls onto the scene. Turns out, Al now has a night shift guy. Want a hand? Gord. Oh, I got her. Gord is Al Quiring's driver. Guys like him come and go all the time. No comment. With Adam on one jackknife and Gord on the other, the race is on to see who can get their wreck off the mountain first. We'll be out of here for the goblin is. The idea is to get the road open as soon as possible. We don't want to hold up traffic. We wander when we have to. I'm going to yank this nose around. I'm going to pull the whole thing down the highway. The cab on Adam's jackknife is twisted nearly 90 degrees and has become so wedged in a snowbank that it won't move. I can't budge it. It's got a full load of pulp paper on there, which is extremely heavy. And I got to try to pull this thing out, get it straightened around. Across the road, the quiring wreck is also stuck. Heat from the engine has melted the snow, and the truck is now frozen in place. Well, we broke it right off the frame, so we have to somehow rig that up. The green goblin's having trouble. But it's not going any better for Adam. He isn't sure if it's the weight or the snowbank that's holding back the truck. Hook that chain on somewhere on the front there, around the spring or anything, just to get it swung around. The trailer should stay where it is. The truck will just come around. Down the road, the highway rep is losing patience with Gord. He's struggling to rig his chains without doing more damage to the semi. Cross the we got to get that thing out of the way before we can hook it on. Gord gives up on saving the hood. He hooks up to the frame and quickly gets the truck free. Adam gets the semi out of the snowbank, but he's still far from finishing. Well, the load's too heavy to go down the hill, and they can't dolly off from the trailer because the landing gear is the cab and trailer are too damaged to be separated, but joined together, they're too uncontrollable to safely tow down the mountain tonight. Nothing we can do. There'll be no victory tonight. All Adam can do is leave the wreck in a rest area pullout and head home. It's been a long night on the mountain. It's got a full load of pulp paper on there, which is extremely heavy. A three semi pileup pitted Adam and Al Quiring's trucks head to head on the same job. Quiring's wrecker completed the job, but Adam had to leave a heavy load of pulp in a rest area on the coke overnight. This morning, Jamie is heading up to finish last night's recovery. The mighty rotator is back in action. Keeping the highway open. Partners and progress are safe for highway. Jamie's challenge is to lift the trailer off the cab so each can be separately taken down the mountain. I'll get the legs out. Our biggest competitor, the Green Goblin, would never be able to do this kind of a job. 
he can go up and down the highway and you know yell and scream on the trucker radio and tell everybody how great he is, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have the capability or the equipment. Hey, don't, don't scratch the paint, man. Jamie prides himself in always having the latest gear. Is it heavy? Yeah, it is heavy. It's an obsession that started when he was just a teenager towing for his father's company. One day, when he couldn't finish a tow because his old truck broke down, Al Quiring's dad swooped in to finish the job. Al's dad had beautiful equipment, you know, way better than what equipment we had. You know, I was so embarrassed. You know, I think I went home and cried about it because it was just so devastating for me to not be able to do that job. Every part of me is driven to have the latest, most innovative equipment available. And I'm able to put it together with the most extreme jobs that happen in this area. Today, Jamie's bet on top-of-the-line gear pays off. Because the landing gear of the trailer was so mangled, there's no way to unhitch it from the damaged tractor. So the trailer needs to be lifted at one end, high enough for a relief truck to back underneath. And the only truck that can handle this job is Jamie's rotator with its swinging crane arm. Put your pin and you can hold it. He'll also be using a new piece of rigging called a spreader bar. Spreader bars spread the stress so they're perfect for what we're doing right here. Jamie will use it to make a sling that will temporarily suspend the trailer. Take that one around the other side. Take your shackle and lay it on the frame. With the sling in place, he can lift the heavy trailer off the cab. Come on, Adam, pull the pin. Yeah, pull the pin. How are we doing? Hey, wait there. We can pull it out. The smashed cab is pulled free, and the trailer is ready to rehitch to a new one. That spreader bar works really good. We've got it nice and suspended. A relief tractor can back underneath it here. And that's what we want to do. We want to solve people's problems here. Being able to go and, and tackle a big job like that, and with the crew we have and with the equipment we have, and make it look like it wasn't nothing, I go home happy, really happy. Down the hill, new driver Ken is in search of cars that need a tow. Drive up and down, look for somebody that needs some assistance. Well, find something to put on the back, take back down into Hope, and uh, maybe find something more. Working the Coke isn't like the big city towing he's used to. When you're in Vancouver, you go to work, you call in your truck, you get a call, you get a call, you get a call, you'll get 12 calls in a row. Whereas up here, it's not like that. You, you, you get in your truck and you have to drive around and act aggressively, actively pursue the work. They've they're closed their hood, they're done doing what they're doing. They're just putting windshield washer fluid in, so they don't need me. After years of having jobs handed to him by a dispatcher, Patrolling the Coke is wearing thin. It's not like you're going to work and you're making 20 bucks an hour. Uh, you're getting paid commission, so if the wheels aren't rolling and you're not finding anything, then you're not making any money. You're just driving around pointlessly. So it seemed kind of to me to be a, a waste of time, which really got under my skin because I do like to stay busy. After eight frustrating hours without finding a single job, Ken gives up and heads back to the yard. Gamble didn't pay off. If this was a lottery ticket, we'd be throwing it in the garbage right now. But not everyone is so easily discouraged. Adam has been working for almost 12 hours. Coming up, uh, you have to take it real easy. He's pretty slick. So I'm going to run to the top of the hill, see how much snow was out there. Just kind of uh, gauge where we're at for the night. So we're a 24-hour business. We don't have enough guys to do shift work. So when, you, when you're given that truck, you drive that truck 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Nightfall is the most dangerous time on the mountain. Temperatures drop, moisture on the road turns to black ice. The car in the ditch down over here. 
With none of Jamie's car towing crew on the coke, the light tow jobs are being scooped by the competition. There's no reason why these guys can't come up here and go to work. No, they got good trucks to drive. They got fuel sitting in the yard. Oh, it's stressing me out because other tow companies are getting the work when we should be doing it. Later that night, Adam shares his frustration with the boss. We're only one man each. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you, can only, you can only do so much work, right? And we've got all these guys around us who aren't doing it. They're not pulling it. And it's like, wow, you know? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, man. It's wearing on you, it's wearing on me. I think we should bring the guys in and talk to them to see what they think. Mm -hmm. They think that somehow they're just gonna be spoon-fed whatever work comes in. Well, you know what, you gotta hustle a little bit around here. You gotta know what's going on. It's getting my nerves up, it's getting Adam's nerve. Everybody's ticked off. It's like, wow, these guys aren't even on the planet. The next morning, Jamie calls his drivers into the office. What I want to talk about and what, what we need to talk about around here is our one tons, our car towing. Just to put it bluntly, it's lame. We've got a lame program going on. I'm sporting the insurance. We're sporting the, the truck payments and the repairs and all that maintenance and like that. And they're entering a car in this yard. And I, I understand, you know, nobody wants to go up there and sit up there and do all and there's nothing going on. But I mean, the guy's sitting down here doing all anyway. So we go sit up there for eight hours and we get nothing we're up there for eight hours we don't get paid so you're gonna sit down here and do all too well, and you don't get paid and this is real ken i've got cars in the ditch i got the competition towing cars and it's a real thing it's a real problem so i'm not yeah, pointing the finger you to us and said you know what we should get shifts started so that everybody goes up and says, I've no, I, I'm, this I'm, is the first time i've, I've ever talked to all you guys that you guys should get up there in the morning have i not ever told you that you told me to use to sit up there and the you, and you exactly said to me the last we were having the drink was i'm gonna start doing that okay and have you ever started doing that no it was a week ago so what's, what happened here now? But the, you know what, Ken, it's not anything about you. You're getting all defensive about it. We're not pointing the finger at Ken. We're not saying Ken's the problem. Okay, starting tomorrow, I'll, I'll go up there at eight o'clock in the morning. Well, and well, we, well we should talk about it between three the hours. three of us. You, you get all pricky about it and, and that we're trying to roast you or something like that. It's not about that. It's, yeah. it's a real problem and you get all defensive about it. It kind of pisses me off a little bit. I got to look at it from a business point of view too, Ken. I got to look at it from the dollars and cents. We either got to straighten it out or park trucks and take plates off. That's what we got to do. We have to have a little bit of a reality check here. That, and, and a reality check's going to come up and say, James, this ain't working no more, buddy. Cash isn't here. There's not cash. There's no trucks in the yard. And I'll, I'll be forced. It won't even be my own thing. This business will force me to, 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 to do this. Get rid of whatever's sloppy around here. Jamie Davis is frustrated that his newest drivers are not pulling their weight. I got the competition towing cars, and it's a real thing. It's a real problem. There's not cash, there's no trucks in the yard, and I'll, I'll be forced. It won't even be my own thing. This business will force me to, 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 to do this, get rid of whatever's sloppy around here. So, well, enough of that. We won't go on and on about it, so good. Hey, Jamie's made his point. He made his point very well. If it doesn't snow, though, and there's no work, there's no work. I have driven up there lots of times during the day, and I've gone all the way to Larson Hill and back, and there hasn't been nothing. I'm new here, so I have to take his advice and Adam's advice and Kevin's advice and roll with it. But before Ken gets a chance to hit the road, he gets a call from Vancouver. Go ahead, buddy. Tow truck friend who I worked with for a couple of years had been hit on the side of the highway. He was going to lose both legs. He's a fellow tow truck driver, so basically he's, he's a brother. He's, he's me, but he's just a different guy. As he heads out to work, the dangers of the job become all too real. If that happened to me up on the hill and I got hit and they didn't stop and I'm lying there bleeding out, I would be dead. In 25 years I've been doing this as a job, um, I've been crushed, pinned, squished, put a hole in my eyeball, broke the orbital bone, tore my rotator cuffs, ripped my bicep off my arm, got crushed or pinned underneath the motorhome for 45 minutes in the snow. But tonight when it gets cold and dark, it's gonna be really nasty. Under pressure to step up his game, Ken works into the night. 
The extra effort pays off when he's the first tow truck on scene at a nasty wreck. Nobody ever wants to see me or Jamie or any of our other guys, but when they need us, we show up. That's what we do. That's what we've dedicated our lives to doing. And uh, you know what? I'll be 90 years old, and nobody will remember me when I came out and changed their tire in a snowstorm. But you know what? I did it, and I helped somebody get along their way, so you can take some pride in that. When he gets the wreck back to the yard, Jamie radios where it should be unloaded. Put that in the bay there, Kim. It has to go in the bay, or you just want it in the bay, because it's going to be a getting it off. Police want it in there. Uh, please make this come off the back of my truck without hurting anything valuable. Thank you. <clears throat> Talk to you soon. Oh, great toe god. Okay, so we're just gonna do one quick shot here. <laughs> oh no, it's not coming off. It's just sitting there. Oh, hang on, am I being a moron? I might be being a moron. I could be possibly being a moron. Yes, I am a moron. Forgot to take the winch cable off. I'm a little bit tired. There we go. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Thank you, old great toe god. Once again, you have blessed me. We have an MVI on Highway 5, southbound north of the snowshed. We have Fraser Valley traffic en route. In the morning, a call comes in to clear a wreck at the top of the cove. A jackknife call came in, two lanes are blocked, and uh, the no post, the concrete meridian has been pushed out all over the place, so Adam took off. We're not going to let Al Guarin get there first. Tired of being scooped, Adam is a man on a mission. I keep my foot in it anyways, I want to make sure I get there before. Well, the police called us, so I guess we better cancel Al, I guess. Well, I'm sure Al Quiring's bad mouthing us on the radio right now. Adam wins the race to the scene. Now he has to get the job done. But the wreck couldn't be in a more dangerous spot. It's trapped on a cement barricade. On one side, drivers speed blindly out of a tunnel. On the other side is the slippery bottom of the Cope's longest and steepest hill, known to truckers as the Smasher. Holy Adam wants to get out of here as fast as he can. Oh, there's rescue right there. His first challenge is freeing it from the cement dividers. I need you to hop in there and kind of steer this thing a little bit. I want to get it, pull, kind of pull it out from that guardrail, you know? Don't turn, eh? What should have been a routine recovery... Unhook the cable. ...has turned into a jigsaw puzzle of concrete blocks. Pull on it. OK. OK. You get out of there, Brendan. Just wait. Pull on the cable. Move these things like six times. After 45 minutes of juggling concrete, oh, that's good. That's good. 
Adam chalks up a win for Jamie's team. I did the wreck myself, and I was coming down the highway with it before Al even got there. It's always funny when you pass them, because they got always got their hand on the wheel, and they're just looking at you when you're driving by, and you just, just wave at them, and you can just know they're pissed. <laughs> uh, it's just funny. Coming up, the high risk of towing hits painfully close to home. I hear sirens are coming! After a long and stressful week, Ken finally gets a day off. But it's a day he's been dreading. So we just uh, go down there and see how he's doing. But that's what we're gonna do. Ken is driving to Vancouver to visit an old tow buddy who nearly lost his life on the edge of a highway. Lower mainline roads were ugly today. The accident was captured by a local news crew. He was shocked to see this red car had slammed into a... A passing car slammed into the back of a tow truck. Ken's friend was caught in between. I hear sirens are coming! The only people that care about tow truck drivers is tow truck drivers. We kind of got to hang out together, we got to socialize together, we got to work together, we got to watch each other's butt. It could be me laying there in that bed with no leg, and hopefully people that I know in the towing industry would come and see me and give me some support. Just going to uh, try and keep my stuff together and, uh, you know, not shed any tears. Hey. How are you? Well, you know, uh, things have changed a little. Oh, my God, Martin. How's this one doing? Well, I've had five operations on it. Holy I had God. three last week. Wow, 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 wow. And it was busted in 10 places. Gee. I'm on the ground. My leg is gone. My other leg is in like 12 pieces facing the other direction. And there's a car by my head. You stayed conscious through all that? Actually, I even phoned the dispatch. I was in survival mode. You stayed conscious through all that and phoned the frickin' dispatcher. I swear to God. Oh, no, I you, knew you, you were a tough guy, man, but I didn't know you were that frickin' tough. But you know, I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna get a prosthesis. I don't think I could take it as well as you're taking all this, dude. Seriously, I mean, that's... Well, I think I'd, be, you know, I'd be a basket case, you know. Well, it's either, you know, it's either I could be moping around and, or, but yeah. that's not me. No, you got to be positive. It'll well, be this, is, this is it. Like, yeah. I know I'll walk again. Yeah. It's going to be a rough road, but I'll do it. No more swimsuit model, well, I No, but I'll be swimming. <laughs> I won't be wearing shorts. It's surprising what you do when you have to. Yeah, yeah. To see him still alive and still positive and upbeat and looking forward to the future with one leg. That's just, that's incredibly inspirational. He inspired me to just keep on going and keep towing and, uh, and stay with it and just keep doing the job. So we'll see how that goes. There's no crying in towing, I'm not allowed to cry. Next time on the highway through hell. Over a foot of snow in two hours. A record setting snowfall. We can't make it up even this little bit of a hill. High hazard. Triggers an avalanche. You see it? I wouldn't want to be in that. Did it going to hit the road? You guys have to go around, there's an avalanche. And a semi over the side. This is a hard job. Leaves Jamie hanging. We're afraid of losing it right now. Hold on, hold on. Oh.